In this video, I'll give you my final picks for UFC Vegas 90. We'll look at DraftKings strategy, lineup construction, everything you need to do to be successful on this slate, and I have some free money for you, so make sure you watch until the end. As always, you can call me Kunith. Let's make some money this week. Now, before we get into the slate, if you haven't already, watch the predictions video from earlier in the week. That's going to be linked in the description and in a pinned comment. That is a full card breakdown that'll complement this video here. Now we can talk about this DraftKings slate that has changed a bit since that early video. Victor Hugo remains on the card. He was supposed to fight Alatong Haley. A bunch of you were in the comments like, Kunith, where's the Hugo breakdown? Alatong Haley has to pull out, so Victor Hugo was without an opponent, looking like he wasn't going to be on the card, but just on a few days' notice. Brazil's Pedro Falcao decides to make his UFC debut this week. He answers the call just on a few days' notice, and Victor Hugo at this point becomes maybe the best play on the slate. I like Victor Hugo here, and I know he wasn't everybody's favorite pick when Alatong Haley was supposed to be opposite him, but now now he's got this short notice replacement fighter making his UFC debut. Hugo's coming in on a full camp, and I think that he's got this guy covered on the feet. I think that Falcao's going to be shooting for a lot of takedowns, and if he does, that might be a problem. If you watch Falcao's fights, he does have a good top game, but I think that Hugo's still going to be able to give him problems, even if he finds himself on bottom. But I think if the fight does get to the mat, it's probably going to be on Hugo's terms. And you got Pedro Falcao, who's not been incredibly active for the last couple of years, and just in this situation, making your debut on a few days' notice against the guy who's been chomping at the bit to get in there. He's been delayed and delayed. I think it's a bad situation for Falcao and Hugo sitting at round minus 130 at the time of recording this. Money will start to come in on him. I assume he'll be around minus 170 by fight time. And if he's sitting around minus 170, that means that he's going to be a bigger favorite than some of the fighters that are listed above him. So you're getting good value when you measure the odds versus the DraftKings salary. And I think that Victor Hugo, if he does win, probably inside the distance, one of the best plays this week. But with that said, we can get into the value plays now. These are going to be your plays at 8,000 and below underdogs you need to make your lineup work salary wise before we do if you haven't already like the video subscribe to the channel comment something for the algorithm get it all out of the way as for your underdogs on DraftKings this week there are a few that really stand out to me first is Chepe Mariscal coming in at 7,900 again if you're playing the odds game you have Chepe coming in at nearly pick a mods he might be a favorite by the time fight time rolls around and he is a DraftKings underdog at 7,900 against Jack Jenkins he showed a lot of pace which I think he's going to put on Morgan Charrier this week. He was able to take him down. He was able to get that arm injury KO in the second round, but he scores 105 DraftKings points in the process. That's largely because he stayed on him like glue. He stayed in his face, landed a lot of strikes, and only 70 points come from that finish, but you got another five points from the takedown, resulting in 105 DraftKings points. Before that, he goes the distance with Trevor Peak. 145 strikes thrown, almost half of them considered significant, 108 DraftKings points because he was taking him down. He reversed him one good time. So you got Chepe Marskal averaging 106 and a half DraftKings points. Now, I don't know if he's going to hit that ceiling and you got to be a little bit careful because Chepe Marskal, he's everybody's favorite dog. Chepe at dog pricing is always going to be somebody's darling because of what he's done so far in the UFC. Not only is he averaging these high scores, but you look at the salary attached to it, 7,500 last time, 8,000 last time. So you've got him at dog pricing. He's been optimal both times, but be weary of going to the well one too many times because Chepe Marskal is probably going to come in around 30 to 40% owned in your contest. Very popular this week. Probably the most popular underdog on the slate outside of maybe Chris Curtis. And if Morgan Chaudier is having success, that means that he's not getting controlled. He's not getting taken down. He's landing strikes of his own and Chepe's missing a lot. So don't be surprised if Chepe Marscal does go out there, scores 85, 90 DraftKings points and comes in at 40% ownership. That doesn't cut it. Not on a 14 fight slate where Victor Hugo and Pedro Falcao basically decide what happens happens on this card. So be weary of Chepe Marscal. You should still have exposure to him, but if I had to recommend anything, maybe be underweight to the field. As an honorable mention, if you wanted Cesar Almeida because of the striking advantage, I totally understand it. Personally, I'm not on him. He's not getting that value play seal of approval from me, but I wanted to mention him real quick. The real value play is right here at $7,600. Jermaine Durandamy comes in fighting Norma Dumont. Norma Dumont is letting fights slip because she's not doing anything. Not only is she not doing much, but she's standing right in front of her opponents. Carol Hosa sat her down with a straight punch. Jermaine Durandamy is gonna be able to do that whenever she wants. Let's not forget that GDR was the one that made Amanda Nunes want to wrestle her the entire time because on the feet, she is a handful. Now, because she's older and she's been out of competition for a while, you're kind of digging in the crates to be able to find what I'm talking about. 
about here, but even Holly Holm, she outstruck Holly Holm over five rounds and made it look easy. And you can argue, oh, she was hitting her after the bell, but I mean, if you cheat in MMA, what happens? Nothing. But it doesn't really matter. So I think that you got Jermaine Durandamy, who's just willing to do a little bit more in there. She's willing to throw more strikes. She's willing to bend the rules a little bit if she needs to. Norma Dumont was dropped by Carol Hosa. She was slept by Megan Anderson, of all people. So if those two can do it, GDR can definitely do it. And she probably comes in pretty low owned. I don't think a lot of people are dying to hit that draft player button on a 40 year old woman on a four year layoff after having a baby. There are plenty of reasons why people won't hit the draft player button on her this week, but that's also part of why she's one of the value plays. We're playing the leverage game. We're playing the ownership game. GDR can hit that ceiling and who knows if Norma Dumont is going to be able to make 135. And even if she does, what is she going to look like at 135? Damon Jackson's got to be in your value play consideration because if he does win, it's likely inside the distance on the back of his grappling. So you know you're getting that 90 or 70 point finish, maybe 45 points if it's in the third round. I'm even fine with that because you'll get plus five points for every time he secures a takedown and he's going to be able to get a lot of control time on the back of those takedowns if he is able to get them. Just look at the control time numbers here at six minutes and 10 seconds of control against Billy Q. One minute, 32 seconds of control against Pat Sabatini in a fight that ended very early. Ten and a half minutes on Dan Argueda. Six and a half minutes. Ten and a half minutes. You see where I'm going with this. If he's able to get on top and Alexander Hernandez starts to gas a little bit, Damon Jackson's going to be able to post one of these high scores. He's broken 100 DraftKings points several times now. I'm personally not all that high on him this week. I think it's a very bad matchup, but he's somebody that you should have exposure to if you're running multiple lineups because he can hit that 100 plus point ceiling. Personally, I think that Alexander Hernandez knocks that hairline back into place, but that's just me. And the next value play has to come at $7,400 Dan the Determined because man, who needs a win more than Dan Argueda right now? Comes into the UFC, drops his UFC debut against Damon Jackson in a fight where he did more damage than Damon Jackson, but he just got outworked by the bigger man, the stronger grappler that night. It was up a weight class, making his UFC debut, not an ideal situation. He loses that fight. You start 0-1 in the UFC, but sometimes you have to do that. That's okay. Comes in, beats Nick Aguirre, makes it look easy, controls him for more than two rounds worth of that fight, scores over 100 DraftKings points, and that's what you expect from him moving forward. He follows that up with a fight against Ronnie Lawrence, where he nearly broke the slate down at 7,500. He had 17 points. The fight is a no decision because Keith Peterson prematurely stops the fight. But based on the position, he looked like we were seconds away from seeing him lock up a mounted guillotine that would have added 90 points to that 17 point performance, putting him at 107 on the night at 7,500. But it's a no decision. So now he's 1-1 one, one, and a no decision in the UFC. And then he follows that up with a fight against Miles Johns. Miles Johns pops, so it's a no contest. He fails the drug test because of something that's no longer a rule, so it's not a big deal. But you see in that fight, he did secure two takedowns, almost a whole round of control time. And if he just did a little bit more, was able to get to that position a bit more, then he would have won the fight, won the decision. But now he is one, two, and a no decision in the UFC. So you know he's hungry, you know he wants to get this win, and if you have to win, if you absolutely need to go out there and perform, you are going to do what you do best and probably nothing else. And we all know that grappling is the most heavily rewarded type of fighting style when it comes to DraftKings scoring because of the control time, the takedowns, and what you could do from a dominant position. He's going to come out here and wrestle like his life depends on it. And if that's the case, he's one of the better value plays of the week down at his price. I think that he's very live for a finish here. He's very live to get takedowns in every round, a lot of control time as well. He's going to do whatever he can to secure the win. Get the show money, get the win money. He needs two checks this week. And Matsumoto is undefeated, but there's also a lot of pressure that comes with that, making your UFC debut undefeated, young guy despite all of the experience, and he was taken down on Contender Series, so I think he's going to have his hands full with the wrestling coming from Dan Argueda this week. So he definitely gets my endorsement, one of the better value plays down at 7,400. And the last value play is going to be Trevor Peak. You need some Trevor Peak this week. Every week is Trevor Peak week. Why? Well, because he can knock Charlie Campbell out in the first round. We saw Charlie Campbell stunned with one punch against Chris Duncan, albeit it was a perfectly straight punch, and I don't think that Trevor Peak can do that. But Trevor Peak's preparation, changing training camps, there's a lot of things to like about him coming into this matchup. Even against Muhammad Yaya, it looked like he was coming into his own a little bit. I still think that Campbell is the cleaner guy, the better striker, and he's going to catch Peak, but Peak might still be there. He might catch Peak over and over again. But Trevor Peak might just eat all that offense, take over in the second round, finish him in the second round, or finish him in the third round on the back of a lot of volume, maybe some takedowns, and Trevor Peak could end up scoring you north of 90 at 7,200.
100. Similar to the Chepe Mariscal situation where he's going to come in at very, very high ownership. So I would recommend being underweight to him, but still having some ownership if you do run a lot of lineups. These are all things that you could set within your lineup optimizer if you have one. And that'll pretty much do it for the value plays. If you want to sprinkle some Nora Coronal in there, I'm not upset at it at all. If she's able to keep the feet, the volume's going to be high. She's going to put Dixon on her heels, well, Mullins on her heels. She just needs to avoid being taken down. Even last time out, she was taken down five times, did pull off a couple of reversals, worked back to her feet effectively a couple of times, but she needs to avoid the ground game this week because Mullins is way better than Edwards is in top position. If you want to throw Cornall in there, I'm not mad at you, but those are the value plays of the week. Let me know in the comments who the two underdogs you think are going to win this week. And now let's use some of these pieces to build some lineups. So we're going to build cash game lineups first. These are your 50-50s, your head-to-heads, your double-ups. The cash game lineup I gave you in the video last week smashed. You had the four winners that you were looking for, that first round finish from the punt playing Kyle Nelson, who was one of the better punt plays that you could ask for on the slate. So this week, what we'll do is actually stack the main event, which might surprise some of you if you feel like the fight's going to finish in the first or second round, which it very well could. But I'm going to take my chances stacking the main event this week between Brendan Allen and Chris Curtis. As always, we have 8450 left over per fighter because of the way that the math shakes out with the matchups. So we're going to come down here. We're going to grab one of the punt plays of the week. Similar to last week, you can come down here and scrape the bottom of the barrel if you want. If you want to grab Coronal, she's a great punt play option this week. But I do think that we'll pay up a little bit and go to $7,400 Dan Argueta. He's not the cheapest. You're not going to be able to come up here and afford anybody you want because you played him in your lineups, but he probably doesn't get finished. He has the path to victory and he's going to get you takedowns. These are all things you're looking for when it comes to cash game punt plays. So now that we have him in there, we have 8,800 left over per fighter. So what we'll do is attack the mid range here. I would probably come here to somebody like Hernandez if I were in this position, 8,550 left over. I might grab Piera. I have 9,300 left over over. At that point, I might grab Alex Morono just because I feel pretty good about him, or I would get off Alex Morono, grab Ignacio Bahamondes, who you feel even better about. And again, that's a lineup that I would recommend using, or at least using that kind of thinking when you're building lineups for your cash games. These are your 50-50s, head-to-heads. These are contests where you only need to place in the top 50% of your field to double whatever it is that your entry is. So if you're a smaller bankroll player, if you're somebody who's consistently playing with less than $100 in your account and you want to build up that bankroll, I recommend doing it with cash games. You don't need to put your whole thing in cash games. You don't need to empty the, the balance in cash games. You could just put maybe half of what you've got in there if you're a smaller bankroll player and try your best to build it up. Learn how to build these lineups because we all want to play tournaments. We all want to make big money from the little bit of money that we're putting in in the beginning. That's why DraftKings is so enticing. That's why the game is so fun. But the reality is if you are playing in a contest that say it's a $15 entry and you've got 23,000 people or 23,000 entries, in that contest, you're playing against people who are making 5, 10, 20, 50, 100, 150 lineups. So if you're somebody who likes to play that contest, but you're only playing with about three lineups and that's half or most of your bankroll, you're really putting yourself in a bad position long term. You're probably not going to win that way. You're better off playing single entry contests with higher buy in. So $100 single entry, $200, $333. Personally, one of my best wins ever have come from a $333 contest where it was 33 people in the contest. 32 people in the contest, you get first place and you win $3,000. It's nice. So the point of me saying all that is that if you are somebody who likes to play in tournaments, the UFC is not going anywhere, brother. You can play this shit every week, every couple of weeks. They're hosting events nearly four times a month. So you don't need to feel like you're missing out if you're not playing in big contests each and every week. Use contests to build better lineups. Learn the promotion is going to be around all year. It's going to be around for years to come. There are plenty of opportunities for you to play in tournaments tournaments, but you're probably going to want to do your best to put yourself in a position to pay more to get into better tournaments where you're playing against fewer people. But regardless, enough of me speaking Japanese, we can get into tournament plays this week. But before we do, if you're at all interested in supporting the channel outside of YouTube, if you're at all interested in getting some tools to possibly build some better lineups to put yourself in better positions in these contests, you can visit kunithmma.com. It's going to be linked in the description and in a pinned comment. You can come right up here to plans. This is a screen that some of you have seen, but some of you 
haven't if you don't have a lineup optimizer but you run multiple lineups i'm telling you right now you're putting yourself behind the field to me if you're somebody who runs 150 lineups even if you're somebody who plays the three dollar 20 max contest and you put 20 lineups in there lineup optimizer does not give you a leg up on the competition in my opinion it just helps you keep up with the competition because most of the people that you're competing against nowadays do have a lineup optimizer and you're not going to find one at a better price than what i've got for you here it's 5.99 for the lineup optimizer that will be preloaded with projections if you want to change them to your projections you have all the ability to do that you can set your own rules you can do whatever you want with the lineup optimizer very user friendly now if you want that and access to everything else so this is the official betting article we have nine bets going out this week the dfs strategy guide where i talk cash games tournament plays the fight that you must target this week the data model with the projections as well as just organizing the information for the stats leading up to the fights this week and access to the community forum you can get that with total access that's $24.99 again kunithmma.com linked in the description and in a pinned comment the best way to support the channel but enough of that let's get into tournament plays this week we are building some tournament lineups here so let's build some that are probably going to be a bit chalky let me show you what a lot of people are probably doing this week ignacio bahamandez is going to be the bee's knees the cat's pajamas this week you might say rightfully so because of the matchup but you can also notice that he's not getting takedowns he's only broken 100 DraftKings points once in five fights he's been favored four times in the ufc so you can proceed with a little bit of caution here if you want to roster ignacio bahamandez at what i assume will be the chalk but right now we are building a lineup that is supposed to be chalky people might want to come up here to walter walker new shiny toy that's cool if you want to play him you've got brendan allen here who should be getting a lot of ownership you got the takedowns you got the submission upside you have the output you've got the control time he's broken 100 draft kings points in the ufc several times and he's got five rounds to work so yes brendan allen great play this week now at 8,000, i think that victor hugo is going to be popular this week he should be very popular this week given the circumstances if he's going to be a bigger favorite than shoddy a bigger favorite than pieta rodriguez Budka, maybe Norman Dumont, then yes, he should be somebody you'd be playing this week as well. 79.33 left over per fighter, so you're going to have to get cheap here. Again, this is going to be the quintessential, I made this lineup on the toilet before we started the fight, so Trevor Peak's going to go in there at 7,200. If you're making lineups on the toilet, you're playing Trevor Peak, and that's cool. Now we've got 8,300 left over. They probably come up here to somebody like Almeida at 7,700, and with 8,900 left over, Matsumoto being being 14 and 0 is somebody that a lot of people will click on this week and this is probably where we land this is probably what the chalk lineup looks this week and on paper it's a pretty damn good lineup i'm not too high on trevor peak matsumoto or almeida but i do think that this is what people will come with now if you want to get a bit different let's put victor hugo back in there brendan allen this will be the commonality between the two lineups if you really wanted to juke the shit out of the competition you can come right up here and play melissa mullins and you're thinking damn do I really want to play Melissa Mullins? Possibly. You could possibly play Melissa Mullins because she's got a good top game. She's going to be able to get top position on Nora Coronal if the fight's going her way, and she maybe finishes the fight from that position. If she does that in the first or second round at what I'm assuming will be single-digit ownership, maybe, you're in a good spot. Let's say you want to go with Alex Morono in kind of a buy-high spot. Alex Morono is not typically this big of a favorite. You come here and you look. Alex Morono has broken 100 DraftKings points a few times. He's had plenty of opportunities to do it, so you would hope that that happens. As of late, hasn't really materialized, but the matchup with Court McGee. I wrote about this idea a bit in the official betting article on the website this week. Court McGee is very past it. Not only is he past it, but you look at his last six fights. You take out, I'll show you on the screen, his last six opponents. So you look at his last six opponents. You've got Matt Brown, Jeremiah Wells, Ramiz Brahimai, and Claudio Silva. So these are grapplers, and they were not able to outgrapple Court. McGee, Carlos Condit, Sean Brady. So these are his last six fights, and these are spreading all the way till 2019, right? You take out the two wins against these grapplers here, Sean Brady, Carlos Condit, Jeremiah Wells, and Matt Brown all dropped him. Not only was Court McGee knocked down in all four of these losses, but he was knocked out in the last two. And not just knocked out, but he was knocked out in the first round. And if you combine the amount of significant strikes that Jeremiah Wells landed, the amount of significant strikes that Matt Brown landed, you're talking about a number that I'm not exact here, but I know it's under 30. So he's not really absorbing a whole lot of punishment anymore. And if Alex Morono goes out there and knocks him out in the first round, you can cancel Christmas. So 
just another thought as well for somebody you could pay up for. But let's put Walter Walker in here for just a second, just to see. 78.33 left over per fighter. I'm going to come down here and grab Dan the Determined. I'm going to grab GDR. 8,500 left over per fighter. I can come right here to Budka, who's got the huge grappling advantage this week. And if he wins, it's going to be on the back of his takedowns. I think he's somebody who can post a pretty high DraftKings score, unfortunately, because of that lay and pray style. Let's try something else. Let's say you wanted to go with Alexander Hernandez, who's got that early upside. You've got Brendan Allen there. You wanted to come down here to Victor Hugo again. Chepe Mariscal is cool. You've got GDR, 7,600, 8,700 left over. You find yourself in this position and you come right back to Budka. Maybe Pieta Rodriguez, if you feel like she can get her takedowns going. If you're playing Pieta Rodriguez, it's obviously because you're playing a leverage game. Not a lot of people are going to want to play her this week against a game veteran in Cynthia Calvillo. She hasn't lit it up from a DraftKings perspective either, but she is getting her takedown, so that's something to consider. Now, let's say you want to go with Chris Curtis. Let's say you were an action man kind of guy this week, and most of the time, I'm an action man kind of guy. I was pretty impressed with the output last time out against Marc-Andre Barriol. I thought that Marc-Andre was going to be able to push the pace and end up winning these rounds, but Chris Curtis just stayed on him, kept his hands moving, and did well for himself. He didn't light it up at 87 points at 8,500, but now he's at 7,300. He doesn't need to score you a crazy amount of points this week, but after the second round, I think the chances of him knocking out Brendan Allen just start to dwindle quite a bit and he burst onto the scene he knocked out phil hawes who may be one of the chinniest of all time at this point he beat brendan allen knocked him out in the second round it was a fight that was super competitive but brendan allen gets caught cool action man's got big power so many people expect him to go out there and knock out hadolfo vieira he lands a ton of strikes on hadolfo vieira who's gassed at one point and he still can't put him away he doesn't even knock him down he can't find jack hermanson over three rounds lands 43 strikes total 17 points was favored in that matchup he can't find hermanson over three rounds scores 17 DraftKings points catches joaquin buckley good knockout loses to kelvin gastelum just never hurts him really at any point nasser Dean Imovov, he's getting absolutely worked. And then against Marc Andre Barrio, doesn't get the knockdown, doesn't get a knockout. So is the power there? Of course. But I don't like this notion that Brendan Allen is chinny. I've heard that a couple of places now, and I don't think that's the case. I think he got caught against Chris Curtis. I think that he got caught against Sean Strickland. Those are really the only guys to do that. And to play devil's advocate against myself, he did look like he was getting stunned over and over again when Bruno Silva was landing against him. But what did he do? He went out there, stunned Bruno Silva with a right hand, dropped him. So the action man play is a little scary for me, but I'll plug him in to give you that representation. But when you plug him in down at 7,300, there's a lot you can do. Let's say you wanted to go with Chepe Mariscal at that point. Let's say you wanted to go with Trevor Peak. If this is what you're coming with, like you're, 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 you're a kind of guy. If this is how you're starting your DraftKings builds, you are the type of guy to go to the bar and say, let me get a beer. You don't ask what kind it is. You don't care how much it costs you. Beer me, please. So the beer lineup of Chris Curtis, Chepe Mariscal, and Trevor Peak leaves you with 9,200 left over per fighter. So at this point, if I were in your position, Mr. Beer Man, I'd probably come here to Alex Hernandez. I'd probably come here to Bahamandez. I'd probably grab Walter Walker. And you know what? As I'm making this, there's probably, I would, I'm going to assume about four or 5,000 people watch this. About a thousand of you have already made this lineup already, but it's not bad. You've got the finishing upside from Chris Curtis. You've got that relentlessness from Chepe Mariscal, knockout upside from Trevor Peak, first round upside from Hernandez. You've got Bahamandez who can win however he wants if he decides to show up. And then Walter Walker against the guy who probably isn't UFC caliber. Again, if you want tools to be able to build better lineups for your tournaments, you can visit KunithMMA.com. And if you want to play Kunith's $1 game, so this is a DraftKings contest that is private invite only you need the link or you need the direct invite the link is in the description and in a pinned comment it's a one dollar contest winner take all up to a hundred might make it bigger for the next event if this one fills but you can play for a dollar win everybody else's dollar you probably won't win mine though because i'll crush you but if you want to join that private contest that will be linked in the description and in a pinned comment and we'll just wrap up here with underdog fantasy this is where you can get some free money to play fantasy this week because they will match your first deposit up to $100 using promo code Kunith or the link that's going to be in the description and in a pinned comment as well. Lots of links. This is the can't miss slip of the week. We have Alexander Hernandez higher than a knockout. Morgan Chaudier under a finish in that fight. We have over a finish or a half a finish for Ignacio Bahamandez. And then we have 
Brandon Allen essentially by submission, which is going to pay out 11.7x. So we'll go ahead and play that for $35, which comes out to just over $400 for payout. Again, that's with Underdog Fantasy. I'll post all of this on Twitter. I'll also put it in the community tab on YouTube. If you've made it to this point in the video, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. One last time, if you don't mind, like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment something for the algorithm, and I wish you the best of luck this week. Thank you.